Hey, this is Neil Bawa, the Mad Scientist of Multifamily, and you're listening to the Mailbox Money Show with Bronson Hill. All right, so this is uh, a really awesome interview. David Pascaloni, really enjoyed this one. This uh, He is a website developer, and he's also been through a lot in his life. So there's a lot of motivation in here. There's a lot of faith in here. There's a lot of where I want to be with my life. Um, a lot of people think that they don't need a brand or they don't need a website or they have, or maybe you have a website, but it's not really generating any leads. And I think that's a real issue. One thing we've done at Bronson Eck, we've been successful at, at creating an engine that creates uh, leads and people can engage. They go to our website, they download a, a lead magnet or an ebook or some sort of resource, or they come to an event, a virtual event that we do once a month. And, and we get those leads and we're able to continue to provide value. And so uh, that's what he, you know, he talks about how, how do you set up things in a way to be able to create a, a really a, an effective way to, to get people in a relationship. So you're going to enjoy this interview and it's very inspirational. He gets into his life, a lot of very vulnerable stuff shared. And I really enjoyed that part of it as well as um, just when it comes to building your brand. So whether you're a passive investor or you are someone who has a business, um, this is, this is a very powerful um, interview. All right, I'm really excited for this show. I have David Pascaloni with me today from Pensacola, Florida, and uh, we're going to talk about marketing, about why uh, people don't get more clients, how you as an individual can get more people gathered around you, because I've realized in order to get to where you want to go, you've got to be able to gather people and get them excited about what you want to do. And as Zig Ziglar says, you can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. So David, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Bronson. Thanks for having me today. And it's really, really excited to have you. I'm actually getting ready to go come on your show, the Remar Remarkable People podcast. And one thing I've really appreciated about you just in this first time we've known each other is just that you value uh, authenticity and vulnerability. And you think that's a very common thing in business, but it's actually pretty uncommon. And so um, why don't you give us a little bit of, of your story, just kind of how you got started in business. I know you are uh, you're, you're basically you're, you're a website developer. You help people get more clients. And I think this is really applicable to all of our audience, whether you are a passive investor or whether you have a business. Um, it's just really important to be able to gather people around a cause if you want to, because just because somebody is uh, at a place where they don't need that, they may need it in the future, or maybe they'll know somebody that would really benefit from this as well. So take us a little bit of background of your story here. Man, yeah, well, thanks. So today I'm a sales and marketing consultant and we do, we coach, we build websites, you know, we help people get on. We just had a client that was a political commentator. We just help get them on Newsmax. So we do all sorts of things. It's really, here's the vision. Here's where you're realistically at. Reverse engineer the plan to get there and then we make it happen. Uh, how it all started for me is to be blunt. I grew up poor. Now there's American poor. There's all sorts of definitions of poor, but we were the poor, like, you know, five and a half foot ceilings when it rained, you know, water came in the house. It just, my mom did the best she could, but she was a single mom and that's, that was our situation. So when I was literally five, six years old, started shoveling for money during the winter, raking leaves during the summer. Um, I didn't get in trouble at school ever, unless it was for something like selling candy in the lockers. I mean, it was just always, what can I do to better myself and make money and, uh, just keep, keep things moving. I never wanted to be poor again. And so as I was going, it was, I never want to leave a job on bad terms, but I always want to leave for a better opportunity. And that just kept going through my whole life. And Back then, people would be like, you hop jobs, you know, that's no good. And now we just call everybody who does that consultants. So it's like, it's just a different generation, a different outlook. But I was an entrepreneur, a consultant, just how God wired me since a child. And now I get the privilege of helping people grow their business every day. Awesome, man. That's great. So you help people grow their business. I know you do website development. Let, um, talk to us a little bit about... Um, I guess how people, you know, a lot of people have mm -hmm. websites. I see a lot of people with websites, especially in, in real estate or in, in business or in life. And it's like, they don't have a lead magnet there. They don't have any way of capturing information. People are there. They, um, you know, it, it's not necessarily intuitive kind of what they're doing or what they're selling or what their program is. Can you talk a little bit just about how, uh, I guess, how a lot of people go wrong when it comes to just marketing themselves online? Yeah. So that's a massive conversation, right? And every situation is slightly different, but you have the foundational elements. In today's society, a website gives you visibility and credibility. Okay. Now a good website is going to have three parts. You have the visual, you know, the aesthetic visual that makes people want to stay. 
Then you have the back end that's attracting people through search engines like Google. So it's well optimized, right? Well, then you also have just the functionality and the sales psychology of it all where you're taking a funnel and converting people. So everybody's situation is different. There's some people that they just need a brochure site just to have visibility, show people they're a legit company. There are online businesses who 99% of their revenue is through a website. So that thing has to be high speed, low drag, and let's get it done and done well. Then there's businesses that most people fall and it's in between. They want to be found on search engines like Google. They want people to come to their website. They want people to spend some time there. And then the call to action, whether it's, you know, send an email, join our subscriber list, buy, purchase something, whatever it is. So a website has a vital role in most businesses and organizations today, but a lot of them are not done right. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, somebody said, you know, asked a question, a marketer I know says, well, where do you live? You know, and I said, well, I live in my house. I was like, no, where do people know? You know, where do you generally live? It's, you live online, right? You live. And for people that don't have a website, this is something I think a lot of people don't understand is that uh, everyone has a personal brand. And, you know, if you show up to an event, if you're, you know, whether you're in real estate, you're in a business, you're a passive investor, you show up, if you sit in the back and you dress sloppily and you slouch your shoulders and you're falling asleep, that says something about your personal brand, right? That you're really not interested. You're kind of sitting in the back, you know, for whatever reason, you're just not engaged. For somebody shows up, they're dressed sharp, they shake hands firmly, they show up on time, they're adding value to other people. That's something that says something about somebody's brand. Now, you know, 50 or 100 years ago, it was harder to do that. You had, everything was in person. You had to go to all these things. Now it's, there's so much stuff that can be done virtually. And I've been amazed that, you know, we've grown our list to over 6,000 people and we've had, you know, raised over $40 million. Be like, well, how do you do? How do you do it? A lot of it just comes down to creating like a funnel or a real clear way to get people to move forward to, to get closer to you. So uh, at the end of every podcast we do, we say, well, how can people get in touch with you? And a lot of people, they say, well, you know, email me or call me or you're oh, not really on our show, but in general, people can say that. But if you have a good website, uh, when people go there, uh, typically there's a lead magnet. We've had, you know, the first couple of chapters of my new book, Fire Yourself there. So people can download that for free and they'll get that and they'll kind of go from there. But what, what do you think? Um, I guess, do you, do you think a lead magnet is a good idea for everyone to have on their website or is it, what are some examples of ways to kind of capture people's information and kind of start working with them? Yeah. So a website is a central hub for most every business. And then you have an email list is still the gold. Okay. Right. Platforms come and go, fads come and go. But when you have your true community, people who subscribe, that's gold. That's like if someone goes to a restaurant and has a bad experience, you know, it takes 12 times to get them back to scratch, right? Or if you have an existing client that's happy, you can sell them easily, right? You can sell them the next product because they know, like, and trust you. So when you have a good website, people come to you and they're the subscribers. So the first thing you should be doing is delivering value in your industry and making people, not making people, but getting people to sign up to stay in the fold, to stay part of your community. That's like one of the most important things you can do for success short term and long. Man, the end of uh, fourth quarter is coming. You're feeling financial pressure. You're not going to make your goals. You're not going to make your, you know, if you're a publicly traded company, you're not making your numbers and stockholders are knocking and calling you up, right? Boom. Send out some mail to your key clients and you're going to get traffic. You're going to get results. So a mailing list is truly important. Now, not the crap you buy off somebody in a foreign country or, you know, things that you, you basically add people to your list. These are people who truly see value in your company and what you're doing and they want more of it. So again, first is you got to bring a game content. You got to make sure that it's easy for them to sign up and stay in communication with them and don't spam the crap out of them and give them a bunch of useless gibberish but don't wait six months before you send an email out, you know, have a balance once a week or once every couple of weeks. So they know what to expect and they look forward to your emails. They don't hit delete because everybody listening to my voice is just like me. We're humans. You see mail, bum, 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 fill your box. And you're like, click, 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 click. If I don't see value, I'm not opening it. Right. Yeah. So or, you or, or you're sure like that... me and you have 40,000 unread emails and they just go unread forever. So yeah. Oh <laughs> man. Drive some people to, to nuts, but <laughs> yeah, I can't do that. I can't do that. I read all my emails every day. I blow man. through it and I'm done. Yeah. 
So, but yeah, everybody's different. We have different personality types, but yeah. So that's one of the things to answer your question is to have a central hub, to have that kind of community built. But again, you got to be realistic with what you're trying to do. What is the outcome you want? So if someone comes to your website, do you want them to call you? Do you want them to buy something online? Do you want them simply to subscribe to your mailing list? Do you want them to buy a book? Do you want them to listen to your podcast? Whatever it is, there's an intent. You built that website. You built your business. So it all goes back to your purpose. You know, your, what's your yeah. vision? What's your purpose? What are your goals? And that website is a piece. That's why I'm a sales and marketing consultant. But we build so many websites for clients all over the world because it's such an integral part of a good strategy and plan. So right. you need to make sure your website isn't just pretty because people charge way too much money for pretty websites and trick good people. And then the people who bought it, these business owners, like I just spent $25,000 on my website. First off, that website should have been 12,000. Second, that website does nothing for them in where it matters on Google. Yeah, They're getting no benefit, right? It's just a pretty website. So if people don't already know about the company, they're not going to be found. A good website today helps you to be found. Yeah, no, that's it. I mean, really, uh, you said a couple of things that are just gold there. Um, you know, it really comes down to, you know, when back in the day, it had to be one to one, right? You do one to one, you have one on one meetings, eventually, you know, mail, you can kind of mail things out, of course, the cost of that. But with Internet, you can get stuff out to a lot of people and it's one to many without taking up a lot more time. But when people open that email, you know, it's part of like we talked about the brand, right? It's do they know that when they open an email from David or from Bronson or from whoever, that it's going to be something that's going to be valued. They're going to get something out of it. They're really going to walk away saying, man, I feel like I'm better for this reason. And um, there, you know, there's, there's a saying um, uh, also by Jim Rohn. He said, you know, uh, make yourself valuable to valuable people, right? If you can just make yourself a value, um, it comes back to that thing about getting everything you want by helping others get what they want, right? So if you can do that, um, it, it's incredibly valuable. So there's people that I know, and we, we've done it, we've launched you know, multiple, multiple things where we raise millions of dollars just from a couple of emails. Right. But again, it's, it's, we don't want to spam people. We want to make sure that we're giving value. We don't want to overdo it, but you know, there's things we believe in. We can really create value around that as well, which is awesome. Um, well, one thing I also really appreciate, we're going to bounce around between business and personal here a bit. Um, I know we shared a little bit of our story. We have some things in common. Uh, you know, I think we both kind of went through some personal setbacks a while ago, um, you know, about seven years ago, I went through a divorce. Unfortunately, it, it, it was one of the most challenging experiences in my life, but it also produced the most profound growth that I've ever experienced. But can you talk a little bit about just challenges in life? And and I know you've, like you said, you've had some adversity. You talked about growing up in a, in a, in a poor family, but, uh, you know, maybe you can talk a little bit about what that's produced in your life or just some of the things that you've walked through and how they, you know, they really haven't happened to you. They happened for you to help you grow. Yes. And so I don't like talking about myself, but I'm on podcasts regularly. So obviously I talk about myself. So I don't ever want to say this as like poor me or, oh, you know, my story is great. It's no, it's just God. It really is God. Yeah. Like, I mean, I had a rough upbringing uh, when I was a teenager. I was always sick, ended up having this rare tumor in my head, took it out, it grew back, took it out, grew back, had radiation, um, get married, have kids. Everything seems to be going great. Um, I actually worked for one company where the guy ended up on American greed. So, I mean, I had professional serious situations and stress. Then in my thirties, I get dental work done and the dude, I get what's called trigeminal neuralgia. So I had an infection that nobody could find that was poisoning me and making me sick every day for four years. And then at the same time I was in agony and I dropped down to like 140 pounds, almost died. And then, you know, I'm going from company to company. I kept I'd go into a company, turn it around, make it profitable and leave, go into a company, turn around, make it profitable and leave. So, you know, we're always busy. We always have ups and downs. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter what your station in life is. There's going to be ebbs and flows, ups and downs. You know, it's, it's the, the valleys and the, the mountaintops, right? But it's how you interpret it. Like you said, things don't happen to you. They happen for you. And you and I have been through some really crappy situations and I'm sure your listeners have been too. And at the time it's happening, when we have the perspective as this sucks, it's tough. Yeah. But when we can wipe that clear and get a clear vision, like, hey, okay, I'm in my 30s. I got a wife and two amazing children. They're watching me die. 
However, huh? I had a good 30 years. You know, I had more. You know, there's that kid who was born handicapped. He's been in the wheelchair his whole life. He'll always be in that wheelchair. He'll never know what it's like to run. He'll never know what it's like to get his arm broken from being hit so hard in a football game. But that kid, you know, he can be happy and have joy. I can be happy and have joy. So it's perspective and it's your outlook, right? So once you have the right outlook, whew, your whole situation changes. And a key thing is I believe in God, man. I believe in God. Okay. I believe the Bible. I believe it word for word. So God is not a vindictive God. He's not a condescending God. He never causes sin. He never causes pain. So whether you believe in God or not, anything that happens to you is not God causing pain. It's Satan trying to, it's causing pain and trying to trick you to blame your father. But really it's God loves you and he's protecting you. Now, just like I have a son and a daughter. I don't know, Bronson, do you have children? Yeah, I have my daughter. She's uh, 11 and she's home with me today across the way because she's sick at home. So <laughs> yeah. So you love your daughter, right? Yeah. You little by little, you give her more leeway to make her own decisions. Sometimes you see her making bad decisions, but you let her so she'll learn. Then there's other times you're like, hey, you're being disobedient. I'm going to let you make this mistake and you're going to get a, you know, a, a, a kind of an emotional spanking here. Right. But then there's other times where she's about to walk in front of a car and you grab her and pull her back. That's how God is. He might let us go through what we think is the worst thing in the world, but he knows we're going to be okay. And there's a bigger picture and we'll always end up on top and we'll always end up with peace and joy. It's our attitude going through it that he's looking for and that we need to get, you know, the right perspective. Now, some people like I could have died when I was 18. I could have died in my 30s. But that's not the end of life. This life is short. Average life is 70 to 80 years. Then it's the rest of eternity with God or in the lake of fire, right? I want to be with God. I trusted Christ as my savior. And I know I have that peace. So no matter what happens to me physically, man, I'm good to go. So this life is short. And that's another thing we have to keep in mind. What you and I were talking about this before the show, like, what's our purpose? Like, what are we doing? What are we really accomplishing? What are we contributing? Are we helping people? Are we just helping ourselves? And you got to take care of yourself. Nothing wrong with that. But if that's your main motivation, that's not the right motivation. Right. No, it's, it's right. You said a lot of amazing things there. And I think, um, you know, when you, you know, when you have faith that, you know, God is working things out for your good, um, bad things can happen and you see it differently. You can interpret it differently than just, oh, this terrible thing happened. And I remember it used to be, mm -hmm. oh, darn, I'm in traffic or all oh, this thing happened, all oh, this, whatever. You just feel like you're kind of getting kicked around. But I think, um, you know, in general life is, uh, it's about growth. It's about learning. It's about giving back. It's about receiving. It's about a relationship with God. And all, if we can do all those things, um, and we can live from that place where right? we live from the place of I'm loved, I'm, um, um, important. Um, you know, I, I have people in my life that care about me. I have a purpose. Then what happens is it allows us to live from a place of freedom and a place of generosity where we're not just living from I need, I want. And so I, I think it changes everything. And that's one thing that I've, I've really you know admired about you is that you, um, you know, there are a lot of people doing business. There are a lot of people creating websites. There are a lot of people doing real estate. But when someone has a strong purpose, I'm always drawn to it because I think that in our culture, a lot of people and maybe even somebody listening it's easy to get into a thing where you're just kind of existing and maybe you've set yourself up where you, uh, you know, you have enough to live on, but uh, there's an emptiness that's there. And so I think whatever age we're at, I mean, some of the people that I've seen that have found purpose, sometimes it's, I, I volunteer in this way and I help out with these kids or I, I'm a parent or I have some of my grandkids or I, I know my neighbors and do block parties and whatever it is, but that purpose is really, I think the most important thing and really the reason that we're here. So I think that's, I think that's really great, man. I love that you're, uh, you know, you're involved with, uh, uh, you know, help people's lives. Uh, what are, what are some, I mean, you shared some great life lessons there. Uh, what's something you wish you could have shared with your younger self? Oh man, that's a tough question. Cause it's the what ifs, right? So yeah. I think you and I, you mentioned, um, going through a divorce and going through that kind of betrayal, it's one of the hardest, most difficult things you can go through, in my opinion, because so many people just take it for granted because there's such high volumes of people in the world getting divorced, right? That doesn't make it right. I mean, that's a formal bond and a vow to God. It's not just yeah. to each other. It's a vow to God. 
And when people break that vow, there's consequences for generations. And going through a divorce, I mean, that was just brutal for me. And that was something I never expected or wanted. Um, but it takes two parties, right? So when I look back, part of me is like, oh, yeah, I wish I never got married to her. But then at the same time, I wouldn't have my kids who I love. And I I could take 10 times worse just to have them again. So it's just like, that's why the what ifs don't matter. But if I was to go back and just seriously be like, hold my own head and say, dude, the only thing that matters is your relationship with God. That's it. Nothing else. Not even you're responsible to your family, but you're not responsible for your family. You're responsible to your friends, but you're not responsible for your friends. You're responsible to your clients, but you're not responsible for their actions. So yeah. I just shake myself and say, all that matters is you and God. The rest will fall into place. And what's the Bible say? The greatest commandment, love God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. And the second is love thy neighbor as thyself. So it's like, it took me 46 years to figure it out. But really, it's just, man, be good with God. And then everything yeah. else falls in place. Because whether people give you good advice or bad advice, you hear the Father, the only voice that matters. And then you actually know that, yeah, everybody's giving me the same advice, but that's just flat out wrong. That's not what I should be doing. Right. Yeah, no, it's it's good. I think uh, it's amazing some of those you know, personal messages that we would tell ourselves because um, you know they, there's there's a saying too that a wise man will learn from their own mistakes, but a genius will learn from the mistakes of others, right? So being able to, oh, that's good. We yeah, wish we could go true. back, but but we can't. That's why we you know hopefully that's why people listen to podcasts or watch YouTube videos is to try to say, well, how can I become the person that I want to be? Um, how did you? I, I know you've had a very successful business. Um, what what have been some kind of secrets for you? Uh, I get this question a lot is what have been some kind of turning points for you that have really led to a significant amount of growth? Has it been, you know, relationships or information or education, or what are some things that have really kind of like you look back maybe a couple of times or maybe this is really what allowed us to, to really grow substantially. So I started off working for other people and just making them successful over and over again. And it was all based on delivering like delivering what's promised. So I wouldn't just sell to sell. And thankfully, I've always been a top 1% salesperson in all the organizations I've been part of. But it's because I view sales as serving and solutions. Okay, there's a client. This is what they need. Here's our, co our company. Yeah, it's not the right fit. Okay, now here's this. But we stay in touch with them, build long-term relationships. So that's how I've always worked and operated. And that helped me make organizations successful. Well, then when I started my own company, I already had all these relationships. So 95% of everything I do, Bronson, is referral business from people I know, like, and trust. And then they tell their friends. And it's like, I'm a marketing guy that doesn't have to market his own business, thankfully. Right? That's fantastic. So the things that made me successful is... I know that I'm not working for man, I'm working for God. So I better do everything the best I can. Because I can BS everybody on the planet but I can't BS God, right? So number one, do everything you can, great. Number two, be honest and real. If it's not the right fit, it's not the right fit. Um, then it goes back to kind of ties in with one and two, but if you're a company, you should be striving to be the best, the best. Like we are the best wheelchair manufacturer in the world or we're gonna be. We're the best ping pong manufacturer in the world or we're gonna be. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I want a company and a team that I can, you know, thrive with. And when I'm down, somebody lifts me up. When they're down, I lift them up and we just drive to the goal, drive to the goal, but it's a worthy goal that we're moving forward together. So yeah. the things that have made me successful is, is I'm not just saying this flippantly or super spiritually. It's like, it's God. And then on my side, it's setting the goals, working towards them and being able to slap yourself in the face and saying, Hey, get up. It doesn't matter what happened. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter what's going on in your life. You set a goal, go do your part. God will always do his. So if there's failure, it's your fault. So that's, that's kind of how I look at the world and life and it's so far so good. Yeah, that's great, man. That's awesome. Well, I appreciate, um, you know, you've really reminded, I think me just as well, just there are things, you know, in life that are, are really important. And those are the things we focus on and we do these things we build a business we generate passive cash flow we give back to the world because 
it helps us with our purpose, helps us to do what we're here to do. And I can tell you're super passionate. You you feel a great sense of purpose. And um, you know, like you said, you, you've been through some challenges, but you know, they, you know, you haven't gotten stuck there. You've said, no, this is the person that I want to be. And this is the person I'm going to become. And, and, and I love it. So I just love the value you're creating uh, for people. Um, I was going to ask you to, um, I guess you kind of shared a bunch of advice. Uh, what, what are, I mean, what would you tell us about like, kind of your latest project you're working on now? I know business folks there always have something they're working on. Is there some new project you're working on now? Man, it's year end. So I just finished tying up a bunch of projects, but one thing I, one of my uh, friends and clients, he had a dream to be a political commentator on major news channels. And just today he was on Newsmax live. I'm super proud of him and the work we were able to do together. And now it looks like he's going to get his own show, right? So he awesome. went from obscurity in the world to now he's on an international news channel. Uh, I have some organizations I worked with and they had old websites that were just there and we converted them and they're seeing like 400% growth. One, um, the other one sales, I think, I need to verify. I don't want to say numbers aren't real, but they're, let's just say this, their sales have dramatically increased and we opened up international markets that never had access to. Uh, that's some of the, some of the things, you know, just recently, recently. And then um, I love podcasting because our podcast is just about helping people. We have guests on the Remarkable People podcast that we talk about what they achieved and they overcame, but we break it down to the practical steps of how they did it so our listeners can too. So by learning to podcast and to be a, a better host each week, I train a lot of people to podcast. So I get to see the people growing their shows and I get to see the people they're impacting. I get to see the growth. So that's super exciting for me and fulfilling. And um, yeah, so I don't know, man, God's, I'm, I'm kind of a screw up in overall, but God, just uses me anyways and works things out. So it's, it's pretty fun to watch. And like this year, I'm not going to lie to you. You know, I've been up financially and down financially and up financially and down financially through no fault of my own. It was like just the stuff, like I got sick, I had to live off savings for two years or like, you know, some, some crazy stuff would happen that I truly didn't. It's not like I had a gambling addiction or a drug addiction, or I made a bad bet or, you know, I, I bought property. I shouldn't have brought. I did that once in 2007. That was my fault. <laughs> but anyways, what I'm saying is I've had ups and downs and it's all worked out. But like this year at the beginning of the year, I saw no way I could make this financial goal. Didn't see how. And I'm like, I just got to trust God. I don't need to worry about how I'm going to do it. I just need to focus on the goal and then do my part each day. And just, uh, man, forgive me. I've been working a lot. Yeah. I don't know, it was last night or two nights ago. I just did all the finances and got the affairs in order. And I'm like, we made it. We made it. Like, I can't yeah. believe it. We made the goal. Like what I thought was not going to happen. And I still got a couple of weeks to add to it. So I'm like, giddy up. Let's go. That's great. That's great. Well, I think it's, it's, you know, true, especially, you know, the end of the year, it's time to, I, I get kind of contemplative around the end of the year where I look at, okay, what worked this year? What didn't work? What are the things that I want to do? What do I want to double down on? What do I want to stop doing? And I just love that thinking space to be able to to really create. And I think a lot of people don't take a lot of time to reflect and just figure out what's working and what not, and and have goals and pray about them and bring them, you know, to God and you know, what what should I be doing here? And and I think there's a lot of it. I think that's that's really healthy to to be doing that. Um, David, well, I want to just really honor you for the way you've created a space to to really uh, be a person of faith and as well as just go after your dreams and not let what happened in the past become, you know, really where you're headed and who you are. And you've really been able to create uh, really, you know, the idea of John Maxwell talks about a lid. Sometimes we have lids on who we are as people or as a leader, and you've been able to be uh, a lid lifter for people, be able to lift the lid on what people think they're they're capable of. So I want to really acknowledge that for you. How can people get in touch with you and follow what you're doing? Yeah, the best way is just go to my website, davidpasqualone.com. And it's, I don't know if people will see in the show notes or if they yeah. can read it, if they're watching, but it's David, D-A-V-I-D, Pasqualone, P as in Papa, A as in Alpha, S as in Sierra, Q as in Quebec, U as in Umbrella, A as in Alpha, L as in Lima, O as in Ontario, N as in Nancy, E as in Echo.
com. So David yeah, we'll pick some in the show notes too. We'll stick in the show notes too, so people can can find it easily for sure. So. Yeah, yeah. It's just I got a long last name, but davidpasquale.com. You can you know check out a little bit of what we're doing. Check out the podcast, and then uh, you can contact me through the contact us page. And then if I can help you in any way, please let me know. And like Bronson and I have been talking about, you know, the rising tide help floats all boats. So we just want to help each other grow and I have a brighter future. And then one thing I will say, if you know me, adding is business is so easy and, and money, like people think, oh, getting money is hard or like you raise money and you raise capital for investments. I think you'll, I mean, you can disagree with me hundred percent, but making the money and raising money is actually not nearly as hard as having a clear vision and staying focused. Yeah. And what I've seen in my life and what I see in my, I do coaching and my clients lives, not, I'll be conservative. 80% of the time we talk about their personal life because mm -hmm. most of the problems in the business are bleeding over from the personal life. Yeah. And you need to make sure that your relationship with God is secure. Your relationship with yourself is secure. And then everything else and everybody else is icing on the cake. Yeah. So my biggest hurdle ever, the biggest demons, the hardest thing I ever faced was going through that divorce and trying to fight for six years and then seeing it fall apart, lies, betrayals, all sorts of crazy stuff. But I had to look back. If you read the Bible, Go read the story of Joseph. The dude did nothing wrong. He was in tribulation and trials for like 30 years, but everything turned out great. And that story kept me together because I was yeah. like, I'm not as godly as Jesus or Joseph, but other men have gone through stuff like this and it's going to work for me because God's good and he never lies. So if you're going through hardship and you're going through down times, that's going to affect your business most of all. But I guarantee you when you get your relationship with God, you know, right? And you get your, not that you're wrong, but what I'm saying is when you have that pure relationship, he's your daddy. Talk to him every day, just like you talk to everybody else. When you read your Bible, he speaks to you, right? Or you're through the Holy Ghost. But when your relationship with God is strong and you value yourself and that's strong, everything else falls into place. So I'm telling you, you'll crush your business goals when you've got your personal stuff together. I love it, man. It's so true. You get the first things first and and hit what's important and uh, faith and relationship with God. I think it's so important. So that's great, man. Awesome, brother. Well, I appreciate you. We'll uh, put, put a link to your stuff in the show notes and I look forward to being on your show soon. But thanks for all the value you're bringing and keeping it real, man. Keeping it 100%. There's a lot of uh, space a lot of people don't enter into a lot, but I so appreciate you. So thanks for being here, brother. Appreciate you, man. Yeah, Bronson. It's been an honor. And ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your time today. God bless. Okay, well, I love that interview. And again, to me, I'm, I'm a deep guy. I love talking about things that are uh, beyond just business. I, lo I love our business. I love we're able to help investors. I love that we generate cash flow for investors and help people with passive income and education. But most of all, it comes down to my purpose. Like I'm here to do this. This is what I'm put here to do. And if I don't do this, then I'm in trouble, right? Because I'm not doing what I'm here to do. Another thing that is really important, I think, for anybody is having a vision for your life. If you don't have a vision, you don't know where you're going, you don't know what's happening, um, you're gonna, you, you, you're not gonna really find the path that you should be on. And there's this idea, even David hinted on it, you know, seek first God's kingdom, right? Or seek first your purpose, or seek first the what's right. And then all these other things that you need will be given to you as well, right? So, um, you know, very spiritual, uh, uh, he had a lot of deep sharing, a lot of challenges. He went through a lot of challenges that I've been through. And I think that, um, you know, it's important that we have people in our communities that we can share with because at the end of the day, and even a lot of the mastermind groups that I'm in, a lot of what's shared is personal stuff. It's not about, hey, I wish I'd worked more or done more in business and all that stuff is great, but it comes down to really having those relationships with family, with your kids, with your spouse, with um, you know other areas that you're really seeing growth in. So I hope you got some value out of this. Uh, thanks for tuning in to the Mailbox Money Show. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode. Love to hear any feedback you have in the comments. Please share this with a friend and uh, take a day and make it phenomenal. You've been listening to the Mailbox Money Podcast. For more free resources, articles, and videos, go to bronsonequity.com. There you can download your copy of the special report, The Single Best Investment Strategy During and After a Pandemic. None of the information shared here is an offer to buy a specific investment, and this is for educational purposes only. Consult your financial, legal, and tax professionals and use your own common sense before making any investment decisions. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to tune in next time for more Mailbox Money.